If you want to build one of the most relevant gaming PCs this year with 8 cores, 16 threads, Ryzen 7, 5700X and an RTX 3070, today's the right video for you where we are mixing used and new parts together and it's coming in just a tad over 500 USD. When I tallied up the deals that I got here on the table, and then I looked at the total price list, I was like, wow, PC gaming has become this cheap. Now, the good thing is, if you couldn't be bothered getting deals on your local marketplace, then I've also listed the prices on what you can price all this stuff up for, just buying it off eBay or AliExpress. And in fact, half of the parts that I'm using in today's build, I've bought them off of AliExpress or brand new. In this case, we've got the brand new parts, which is the Snowman MT6S CPU cooler. This will keep the Ryzen 7 5700X around 60 degrees when you are going max load. And then in gaming, it'll do about the same depending on the game. Now for the other new parts, we're using a case. This is the thermal tape divider. Wherever you are in the world, you can usually get a really good case fitted out with fans that'll look good for around 60 US dollars. Then we've got the SSD, the storage. We also go brand new here because I don't like to generally use used storage. It's too inconsistent to pick up good deals, especially on SSDs, as a lot of people actually destroy used SSDs and hard drives when they trade them into recycle centers and things like that. But the prices of this stuff, it's only $40 for a one terabyte M.2. Then we're looking at the big one, the big player of today. This is the RTX 3070. I couldn't believe the prices of this on the used market locally, but even on eBay, they go for around 250 US dollars. So we're gonna check out the performance of this GPU right after we whip up this system. And then the last few components, we've got a DDR4 memory. I'm just going here with a 32 gigabyte 2x16 kit. I actually got these used, but because in Australia, DDR4 prices are actually quite expensive, both used and new, the prices you pay in the US for new actually ends up being roughly the same as used in Australia if you were to buy them here. Then we've got the last component here, the power supply. Now, a lot of people don't like using used power supplies. I love it because I know how to test them. I know how to see if they've got good life in them. This one here is a thermal take. I believe it's got no markings on it. However, just judging by the gauge of the wire, I would say it's around a 500 watt power supply, which should be perfect for today's build. Or if you want to go out and buy a new power supply, you will be spending a little bit extra. With that aside, let's whip this thing up and see how the RTX 3070 performs on a Ryzen 7 5700X versus even the latest and greatest CPU, the 7950X 3D, which will actually cost more than this whole build if you were to just buy that CPU alone, which in this case, I don't think you're gonna miss out on a whole lot of performance. This is the iPhone 15 Pro, weak, fragile, and easily breakable. Though it doesn't have to be this way. With today's video sponsor, Casetify, and their new lineup of cases for the iPhone 15, you can drop your phone from up to 10 meters high and still not have to worry about it breaking. And now we're gonna put those claims to the test. Well, there we have it. I was even kicking goals down at the park with the Casetify case on and it doesn't have a scratch on it. Now, that's protection. Casetify make this possible with what they label as 10 times the military grade protection on the Ultra Bouts lineup. However, if you want something low profile, they have different styles starting from the Impact line, which still offers four times the protection and other styles that scale in between. The, the Ultra Bouts is my personal favorite with six layer rugged protection, a camera lens cover, eco shock lining, and the Ultra Bounce corners. I was excited to even start shooting hoops with my iPhone 15 Pro, knowing that it won't leave a scratch. The all of this at only 68 grams, and it's still MagSafe compatible. On top of that, it's also made from recyclable phone cases and plant-based materials. However, what's the point of all this if the case looks ugly? Well, here's where Casetify on their website have over a thousand designs to choose from, and if you don't like those, well, you can make your own custom design. But the best part, go to casetify.com slash techyescity and get fifth. 15% off your order. Don't say I don't take care of you guys, unlike this iPhone 15 Pro. Oh, but I live life on the edge, Brian, and I hate cases. Well, Casetify have you covered, literally. 
with their screen and camera lens protectors. Links in description below. So here is this beautiful system right here. However, we have one big problem that we've come into so far, and that is this Inno 3D RTX 3070. I've actually haven't tried too many Inno 3D cards. I believe the last time I tried them was with like a GTX 980 Ti or something like that. And it wasn't actually bad, but this model here in particular, if you are not into tuning, I would avoid this model. And the reason being is we're testing out our first game here, Fortnite, and I'll show you guys in real time what's happening. And that is the GPU is okay now. It's under 80 degrees, but before it was just thermal throttling straight away. And this is after we've undervolted this GPU. So we've got here that the cooler is just not big enough for this RTX 3070. And it's just slowly, slowly creeping up. I've got it at 70% fan speeds, but I'll probably have to raise the fan speeds even more. So the cooler that they made on this card is just a poor thermal design in general. But the real good news here is after we've undervolted this card, our performance has not dropped at all because we've accounted for that with the extra memory speeds. But in fact, on this particular model of RTX 37, we've actually gained performance because we're not thermal throttling anymore. So we've just finished testing this gaming PC right here and the results are actually stellar because we've thrown the RTX 3070 in the benchmark system. Well, we didn't throw it in, we put it in gently. If we threw it in, the, the RTX 3070 probably wouldn't work anymore. But here's where the results get really good because I'm going to show you guys 1080p results, 1440p results across five different games here. And you'll see through the benchmarking that we did here at both 1080p and 1440p on very popular games on Steam and also the Epic Game Store, the FPS was extremely good. You're not missing out on a whole lot if you decide to spend $140 on a CPU, get an AM4 motherboard and some cheap DDR4 versus say a 7950X3D, which will also require a $200 water cooler and a $200 plus board to keep that thing in wraps. This thing here, this whole combo, we got here $500 gaming PC. Well, actually a little bit over and it performs extremely well. Now, the only problem I had is, as we mentioned before, the RTX 3070, that model, this model in particular, was very lackluster. I'm actually very surprised that NVIDIA would allow this, a board partner, to release a model like this, because if you guys didn't know, the graphics card partners like AMD and NVIDIA, and even now Intel, I guess, they get the cards in before they're released to market and they check them themselves. They have to vet them themselves to make sure that that's not being a bad uh, image on their brand. So in this case, I'm just really surprised how this Inno 3D got to the market in the first place because at its default settings, it is thermal throttling. And even when I undervolt it with too low a fan speed, it starts slowly creeping up towards the 80 degrees, meaning the thermal solution is just not good enough for the RTX 3070 GPU silicon. So that was actually the most surprising thing out of all this benchmarking. But once we upped it to 80% fan speeds, it did keep it under control. And it wasn't actually that noisy, it wasn't too bad. So the noise, and we'll give you guys a quick listen to the whole system. And so it's not the best sounding piece and it's not exactly a jet engine but it is a little bit noisy which is why i've turned the pc off while i'm doing this recording here because it would just creep into the recording and would be not just annoying for you guys but annoying for me while i'm trying to film it but let's get back to those results because you guys are wondering is there some anomalies with these gaming benchmark numbers and the answer was actually two anomalies and that was the Baldur's gate 3 results performed better with the ryzen 7 5700x that was really surprising. It was actually shocking because it was on the 0.1% lows and the 1% lows. Now, people could ask, why is this happening on the 7950X 3D system? Why is it going down to three? And then on the eight core, it's not. And hopefully I just, pretty much my guess would be the eight core on a single CCD versus the 16 core, which goes across two CCDs. Perhaps that could be the reason 
on the 7950X3D. There could be DDR5 versus DDR4, but one thing for sure is this Baldur's Gate 3 test is actually one of the most interesting tests for CPU and GPU benchmarking that I've done in actually quite a while. It tests the hardware in just such a different way. And so here today, we actually got a win for the 5700X, which is a lot cheaper, and I'm gonna keep reiterating that, a lot cheaper than the 7950X3D. So great result there, even though it was kind of an anomaly, it just shouldn't happen on something that's later, latest and greatest. And it's also got that extra gaming cache on board. But then we also went over to CS2, and here is where the results were really close between the Ryzen 7 5700X and the top tier flagship CPU, but what I found here was the GPU utilization for the 5700X was a little bit up and down, even though the FPS was really good, the 0.1% lows were really good. I mean, the GPU utilization was kind of all over the place. And so I think it's perhaps a bug with CS2. So basically CS2, it's just been recently launched and I'm guessing there's these bugs that just come out in the game as we saw in actually the previous video we did, I'll put the link up here where we had a 50 cent Xeon and that was getting some weird frame pacing issues. So hopefully in the next few months, CS2 will get patched out and just have an absolutely smooth experience. But I think that'll take still at least a few months to do. And I'm seeing these sort of weird issues prop up even on different hardware that's relatively new like this system right here. Anyhow, our final test here today is the power consumption. And this is where this system performed pretty much identical to the flagship system while we're gaming. The idle power consumption results were extremely good too. And keep in mind, this is with a budget power supply. The power supply I'm testing from the wall with the other system is a, it's actually for me, I got it used in a bargain PC that someone was just basically giving away to me. And then I just pulled the power supply out, put a cheap one back in, but this, a Zeus Thor power supply is usually from the stores very expensive and it's a gold rated power supply which means that it's going to be more efficient than the one in here so basically the difference between AM4 and AM5 when it comes to power efficiency there is not going to be a whole lot extra or if you're already on AM4 and you're on a Ryzen 5000 CPU in particular you're basically not missing out on much going up to that latest and greatest stuff from AMD. And this is in general where I'm going to go with this outro. I think you don't need to spend a whole lot more than $500 on a gaming PC nowadays if you want to mix used and new together and just get an absolutely phenomenal experience. If I had the choice, I would probably just put in a different RTX 3070 model. I'd be looking for one with a beefier cooler or actually any other RTX 3070 model out there that doesn't have the thermal throttling issues as you know, 3D. But granted, we undervolt it, we get around that. And I mean, just got around that because it was close to not uh, working properly. But that would be the only thing I'd really change out in today's build. Everything else, the PC case itself, this is called the Thermal Take Divider. It looks really good. Everything's set up. The uh, Snowman, those MT6S coolers from AliExpress, they do a phenomenal job. Even in this case right here with it being enclosed with a glass side panel, it's getting mid 60 degrees on the most strenuous of games. So that's a really good indicator for some of the gear that I'll put the links in the description below for you guys for. But really when it comes down to it, I've got an RTX 4070 Ti in my main system right now. And I've tried to look at RTX 4080s and 4090s and maybe even justify it because I love tech so much. I'm trying to justify putting one in my main system and I just don't need it. There's just no need for this higher end gear, I feel. Even if you're playing at 4K, I just like to lower the settings to medium and mix them between medium and high and just get the most out of my gear. <laughs> maybe there's something wrong with me because I don't want this latest and greatest stuff. But I think now it's getting to a stage where you just don't need it. And that's the weird thing where we saw into different the differences between this rig right here and that 7950X3D, you're getting to the stage where who needs this FPS? Who needs past 300 FPS in CS2? If you do, if you need past that, I've got to ask the question, are you playing for big money? Because if you're not playing for big money, then there's pretty much a null and void point there because if you're good at 300 FPS, you're gonna be good at 
150 FPS. You're going to be good at 100 FPS. And I've seen this so many times before in the past. I'll see players who play at 120 FPS and they're better than players that play at 360 FPS. And that's just because it get, comes down to it at the end of the day. It always comes down to skill and just how good you are at the game. But, and so I feel like the PC industry right now is in a really tough spot because these PCs like this $500 banger right here that we built today, I feel is in very high demand as opposed to $2,000 and $3,000 systems, which aren't, when you really get boil it down, it's not giving you a whole lot more. Sure, you can turn on fancy ray tracing and stuff like that. But to be honest with you guys, I turn on ray tracing and in a few select titles, it looks okay. It does make it for a better experience, but it's not going to change my world of gaming. Actually, the biggest thing I realized after playing Baldur's Gate 3 recently and binging on that was more so the actual game and how it's designed. I think graphics are at a stage now where it's all up to the gameplay over the graphics. And so something like this PC right here, it's going to serve you so well for just having a really enjoyable PC gaming experience. Anyhow, guys, with that aside, I'm going to check myself out and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. And do let us know in the comment section below what you think of the build here today. Would you change things personally and what would you change them to? I know a lot of people would say, why don't you build it with an RX 6700 XT used or an RX 6800 XT? And I'll answer that question preemptively before we get on out of here. And that is, I got in these builds, RTX, and Ryzen 7, or I'll use an i7. It depends on what's cheap on the market at the moment, but I feel like the Ryzen 7 is such a great CPU at the moment. Even if you're buying off AliExpress, it's gonna be a great um, CPU for not just using yourself, but also flipping in a gaming PC. So this PC is ultimately going to be end up uh, being reflipped. And the RTX 3070, people when they buy in Australia, they must, like, I don't know if it's just an Australian thing, but in Australia, the statistics I was told from retailers nine out of every 10 people buy an NVIDIA graphics card when it comes to a dedicated GPU in Australia. And so that uh, pretty much expands to the PC flipping industry too. And so if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU in your rig to sell, you're pretty much doing yourself in because I guarantee you one thing on that note, people looking for a gaming PC, if they want an AMD card, they're not going to mind using an, a an NVIDIA card if the price is right in that rig. But when it comes to people looking for that NVIDIA card, they're not going to entertain getting the AMD card. And so that's what I've found with my personal experience when I'm selling PCs. So that's why I've got the parts I got here today. But anyway, with that aside, we've also got the question of the day. And this comes from Resident Evil Fan 4. And they asked, did you disable Spectre? And so they're actually referring to the previous video we did on the 50 Cent Xeon. And yes, we always disable Spectre and Meltdown when it comes to doing tests on Intel CPUs that where it can be disabled. So at Tech City, I'm always going to disable those updates if they can be disabled. Some of the newer CPUs, for instance, 10th gen and onwards, I think was Meltdown immune or something like that. <laughs> you know, these CPUs, these electronic devices now, they're catching viruses. They're, they're just biological now, watch out. But yeah, that, that's, got, that's immune to it and the parts that aren't immune to it when it when I can, I'm gonna disable that and increase the performance as much as possible. Hope that answers that question. And if you guys have stayed this far and you're enjoying that content, then be sure to hit that like button. And also if you wanna see the content as soon as it drops, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll catch you on another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.